Hey guys, I'm Orthodon and we are back for Sabiqui Bisco episode 12. This is the finale. So, really quick, uh, let me know guys what you think of the audio quality, because you're going to hear a lot of humming in the background now, like if I stop for a second, you can hear that. Um, I used to have a filter that filtered all of that out, but I, I, I've been noticing for a while now, ever since I started doing that, that my audio quality isn't super great when I have that on. Everything seems like a little bit more muffled and everything, but it does get rid of that background noise quite a bit, and especially other noises that happen as I like move around and things shift and everything, but I, I think this sounds better quality-wise, and I think that might be better for the channel, so just let me know which you guys prefer, what I've had throughout all of Sabiqui Bisco, I'm pretty sure, or this episode's audio quality. Um, but anyways, uh, as for uh, Bisco, uh, he is alive, for one, which is crazy. He has a glowing arm after that arm had fallen off, so I'm, I'm hoping we get some kind of explanation that satisfi satisfies me, but I don't know if we will. Um, last episode, and even now, I am still slightly disappointed. Even though he's a badass, I'm glad he's back and everything. Um... And I'm glad he's not dead, but I liked the idea of Bisco's soul being within Milo and and what that meant and for like Milo's character growth and everything. But now he's just back, which kind of makes that all null and void. You know, he still has had that impact in Milo and it still has changed Milo, but I don't know. It just feels less impactful now, you know? But, but yeah, I'm gonna sneeze. Crap. <coughs> Oh, apologies, guys. Um, so, we still have the Tetsujin to deal with. They're still fighting that. So we're probably going to see Bisco kick the thing's ass, and it's going to be badass. I mentioned that some of it seems televised, as long as the telev uh, the televies, yep. <laughs> the televisions cut back on, because we saw them get cut off before. I'm going to sneeze again. Crap. <coughs> oh. Jesus. Excuse me again. Um... And yeah, Tyrol has made a comeback. She has a manual, seemingly, of some sort, so I'm, I'm wondering if that's going to come into play. But other than that, I'm excited to see how this show ends. It's been a, it's been an okay show. Um, definitely not my favorite, but it hasn't been, you know, like, boring to watch. It's been so weird and wacky that it's been kind of entertaining, you know? Um, but there are just a few things that I am confused about, and let's see if we get answers for them here. So let's get started, shall we? All right, we are going to start here in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, now. It was really cool last episode having the the moment with Bisco returning, and you see his like face just like the opening starts off. It was really neat. We've never seen those whales. But I'd rather them give me random crap in the opening than spoilers, you know? So I'm okay with it. Assuming we don't see the whales this episode. <laughs> but that'd be really random if suddenly giant whales came in. All right. Oh, are we going to see him coming back? Okay. Cool, but how? <laughs> hmm. 
Oh my god, he's entirely glowing! Oh my god, his arm got cut off! <laughs> yeah, okay, so he doesn't even know. Alright, they dodged it. His arm isn't glowing now! Now it's glowing! <laughs> Damn continuity. Oh! No, it's not continuity. It glows and stops glowing randomly. They made an active choice. The Rust Eater? What is going on? Jeez. Wait, is he cut in half? Oh, shit! He's not even the one that took it. Hmm. Invincible? Guy is determined. Oh, yes. Nice. There's everyone's throwing bows. Half-human, half-rust-eater. Is he gonna like self destruct or something? Oh, she's gonna have some info. Yep. Uh, well, that'll stop it. Jesus, that's a big-ass mushroom. Bunch of them. <laughs> Time to save the world. Go shoot everyone with arrows. <laughs> well, 
pretty sure the AI is, uh, Kurokawa now. Oh, so is Kurokawa actually in there? Ooh, so it's gonna be up to... Milo's gonna do it. You're just gonna have to play defense and protect him or something, right? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Pawu's pole technique. Hmm. Give him a kiss. Kiss this man. <laughs> she definitely wouldn't be the type to kiss someone. <laughs> oh, shit. Yes! <laughs> I didn't think she was actually going to do it. I was kidding. Nice. Tyrell. <laughs> Taking you as my reward. Oh, shit. Oh... <laughs> I helped as much as I could. See ya. Oh, and now they need to kiss. <laughs> yeah, I really didn't think that one was going to happen. I kind of already did. <laughs> Yo ho? Oh. oh, look at this badass chick go. Shit, was it not enough? Oh, nice. Oh, it was enough. Gave her a mushroom parachute. Oh, well, there he is. Ugh. Nasty. Shoot him right in his stupid face. Okay, so the TV is working. Nice. What? 
protecting itself. Guess it's not going to be that easy. What was that arrow going to do? Jeez! Oh, nice! That was his arrow that he shot preemptively, wasn't it? Oh! Oh, shit! Not his eyes! Oh, yes. Nice. Same thing that he told him. Believe. Damn. Nice. That should do it, right? Oh my god! Oh my god! Why did it do that that time? Holy shit! Well, okay. It's consuming the outer shell. See ya, bitch! Alright. Well, that's a new part of the landscape. Look at all those mushrooms. Jesus. Oh, the rust eater affected her too? Her rusting is gone. Is... Is his as well? Or did he get the cure? He might have gotten the cure. Oh, they're just chilling up there. Look at look at Bisco's arms. They're on the back of his head. He's just chilling. So is he, is Bisco going to make it through all this? Oh, shit. He took all that poison stuff, didn't he? No, maybe he'll be fine. I don't know. This music's too happy. I thought it was going to be like... I thought he was going to die or something. I don't know what's going on anymore.
This this is the outro normally, right? Huh! She just has a bunch of it. Is she gonna go like sell it? Panda clinic. Yeah, get rid of everyone's rusting. Oh, are those the they're the ones from the beginning, aren't they? Like the very first episode, I think we saw them. Uh, the kids. Oh, their parents are returning, right? Yeah. Does he still have wanted stuff out? Oh, back here at the gate. Ooh, she's the new governor. Denounces the per persecution of mushroom keepers. Nice. Hmm. <laughs> it's just them. The man-eating panda. Why are they still saying this shit? She even denounced... Okay, so hardly anyone believes it. Not bad disguises they've got on, though. I've seen far worse in anime. Hey, they're watering the mushroom! He said to do that, right? Ah, so... It's pricey. <laughs> uh, and then they just take off their disguises anyway. Hey, a picture! He did that last time too, right? <laughs> Give him a peace sign! Nice. It's a good picture. Hahaha! <laughs> So he has eternal life and youth? Damn. Nice. <laughs> Alright. Oh, this is new.
Into some cool flashes before the credits. All right, we'll watch this, see if there's anything after or during that we need to see. And put... Oh, we, we do have some images. All right. Just some stuff from throughout the season, it seems like. This music is crazy. <laughs> this damn song. It's crazy. I have no hair to head bang. I have a beard. Can I? Nope. It's not moving. Aw, that was some nice pictures at the end. All right. Oh, we have a little bit. What is this? Oh, uh, the framed picture. Nice. Cool. All right, guys, that is it for Sabiqui Bisco, the end of the show entirely. At least, you know, I don't know if it'll ever get another season or, or anything. I'm sure the manga is still ongoing or light novel or whatever this is based off of, you know. But, uh, but yeah, that was actually a really good episode. Like, I guess... You know, they they left it open-ended where they could keep going, but I felt like it wrapped up all, like, the story points and everything, so I felt like it was, like, a pretty good ending. Like, sometimes, sometimes what would happen is, I think I even talked about it early on in this show, is they'll bring up this idea of, like, the rust eater, this mushroom that can, like, cure all rusting, you know? And it will be this, like, legendary thing, you know, which it was in this show. But a lot of the times that will be, like, the end of the show is when they find it. Like, that's the last thing that happens in the manga is they find it, you know. Which means that when anime gets an adaptation, we only get, like, you know, the first... I don't know how many chapters it normally is, but... We only get the first bit, which means that they never find the Rust Eater. And usually it ends with you being like, well... Do they ever find it? Kind of thing, you know? And, but in, in this show, they did end up finding it, which was, like, the big legendary thing. They they beat the big bad guy, and everything pretty much resolved itself. Like, they could go on telling more stories, you know, and, and seeing how this world changes now that it's able to get rid of so much rusting, thanks to Bisco and everything, but, um... But they don't have to, and it could just end here, and we could never see more, and that's fine, you know? So, that's pretty cool. But, uh, so, they gave us an explanation that I don't know that I'm entirely satisfied with, but I guess they they made it to be such a supernatural thing that really, you can just explain it away, you know? And and I'm okay with it. I, I love this episode so much that, you know, I'm fine with maybe the explanation not being, like, the... being, like, the one thing that I wasn't the biggest fan of, you know? But basically, they said that uh, he's half human, half rust eater. The blood from the pipe snake, like, imbued the spores of the rust eater in him. So I guess when they... When they fought and defeated the the pipe snake, he I guess he got the blood on him. I, I don't quite remember that. I'm sure it did happen, you know? Um, but, and because of that, it has imbued his body with, uh, like, rust eater spores, which are giving him eternal life and eternal youth, you know? So, apparently, he just can't die and can't age now because of that. And like I said, it's just like a supernatural way of saying like, yeah, we brought the character back, you know? Um, 
Because, like, the thing is, is they set up the idea that these... The problem is, is with this show, I keep trying to ground everything in a bit of reality. And I think that's my, like, big mistake, where it's not grounded in reality at all. But I thought, like, obviously, none of this stuff is real. I understand that. But when I say grounded in reality, like, when they say that the, the Rust Eater is this mushroom that can consume rust i assume that all it really does is consumes rust really well and can be used to synthesize an antidote to the rusting disease i didn't think it was going to be something that also could just turn bisco into a freaking god and uh and uh what's it called give him eternal life and eternal youth like you'd think like people would like chase after that now granted the pipe snake is dead it's probably a very special circumstance that this happened, but, like, if anyone bathed in the blood of a pipe snake could... Uh, well, no, okay. The Mushroom Keeper's blood is different from humans. Could any Mushroom Keeper, then, that has this different blood from humans, uh, bathe in the blood of a pipe snake and become immortal, you know? Because I feel like that'd be, like, a really hot commodity. That'd be something people are, are after, you know, is immortality. But, I don't know. Um, either way, like I said, that's probably, like, just the... I just felt like it was an easy answer of, like... Oh, hey, it's a supernatural thing that just made him immortal, so let's move on, you know? But, like I said, I like the, the rest of the episode enough, so let's talk about the, the rest of the episode. Um, <laughs> uh, Pawu being able to control her strength enough, because she's used to uh, the art of mercy and everything, as she said, was was a really cool thing and a good way to have her character do something, had to break the mask off it without uh, sending too much shockwaves and everything, which would potentially set off the uh, self-destruct and everything. So she was able to hit the mask with the perfect amount of strength to not cause shockwaves, but still cut it in half. So that was, that was really neat. And I like how Bisco was like, I'll just give you anything when you get back. Just go on, you know? And she kisses him and says, uh... And says, like, this is just the, like, the down payment on what I'm going to take the rest of you when you come back. So, essentially, basically saying they're going to be together when she's back. So, that was really cool. She's very abrasive and, a, and an awesome character. So, that was that was a really cool moment. I didn't think she was actually going to do it because she's she's more of, like, this badass character. But, I mean, deep down, she's, she's still a, a girl, you know? Uh, she's still a woman, so... But, uh, but yeah, so I wasn't sure if she was going to help herself to something like that, even though it, it went through my mind, obviously, because I said it. But uh, right after I said it, I started doubting myself. But I love her line of, uh, of, shoot, what, oh, shoot, what was it that, I think it was, um, Jobby that said it. He said, like, do you want, do you want something? Like, do you want my help? Do you want me to come with you or something? And, and she said, like, no, I've already helped myself to the tongue of a god. <laughs> so I just, I don't know. Wherever she said that line, I really, I really like that line. That was, that was funny. Because, I mean, I guess essentially at this point, Bisco is, you know, on the levels of a god. But, um... I really, really love the moment coming back where, you know, Bisco taught Milo uh, how to shoot and, and everything and went over those two rules with him with the, uh, um, shit. Now I can't even remember the first one. The first one was, like, keep your eyes steady or something like that, and then the second one was, like, believe or keep your eyes on the target. I think it was, or something like that. Um, and the second one was Believe. And then it came back here. Visco gets blinded. Um, and 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 he does that. Uh, Milo comes in with that. And that, I thought that was really awesome. I, I like all these little things this episode that were built up early on in the show. And then they come back. That always makes for, for great storytelling. Now, one of the other things I wanted to look at was... After everything's over, we get a bunch of flashes of kind of what's changed. 
and I read most of what was on the screen, like, of Pawu becoming the new governor, um, and stuff like that, so... But, like... North Miyagi, Great Plains Military Base, Akaboshi Bisco, Bomber. So, like, it's like they're still showing his wanted poster. But this is at the North Miyagi Great Plains Military Base, then, not at, uh, Ima Imahime. Um. So that, oh, there it is. Uh. So it shows Pawu, new new governor Nakayanagi Pawu uh, declares independence from the Japanese government. Okay. And then it says she dupa dupa do denounces the persecution of mushroom keepers. Okay, so I guess the way I see it is Imahime City is now all for Mushroom Keepers and everything. Um, but maybe the rest of Japan is still against them, still has that bias against them. They still have the wanted po posters up. And uh, and that's what the guy was saying at the end, is like, no one really believes them, you know, what the wanted posters say. So I guess that probably makes the the most sense, but that's cool, so Pawu is the new government, she looks good in her government outfit, pretty sure she'd look good in anything she wears, <laughs> um, but Jobby's right behind her when she, when she says that too, so that's really cool, that Jobby's kind of hanging out, maybe trying to be one of the, uh, put like a face to the, to the mushroom keepers and everything, might be what he, what he does, but, but yeah, that was just that was just a really a really good finale kind of culminating everything together that that has happened just you know Kurakawa still being in some regards alive you know with his uh with him being behind the mask of his body actually being there which i mean i thought it was going to completely like melt away but if if Bisco's body didn't completely melt away then i guess it makes sense that Kurakawa's didn't either you know um, but, but yeah, I, I enjoyed the bits at the end, uh, once again, like I said about things from the beginning coming back, is them going to that gate with those same people, um, with Ota and, uh, it looks like Ino Shige, uh, and seeing that they are taking care of the mushroom that, that Bisco told them to at the very beginning. I don't know how long it's been since the very beginning, so did they... Did they immediately start taking care of the mushroom? Or did they end up start taking care of it, like, as soon as they saw that the the mushroom keepers were denounced and, uh, or denounced the persecution of them, and they saw, like, the mushroom keepers saving everyone from the Tetsujin on TV, you know, kind of thing? Was it, was it after that that they started taking care of the mushroom? Or was it the whole time, from the time? I like to think that it was from the time that he left, they just decided to believe, you know? So, I thought that was, uh, that was really cool. And then Bisco giving them the cure. And that's another thing I wanted to talk about, is the cure. You'd think if, if Bisco was making the, the Rust Eater in the purest form and he could keep doing it, you know? Because he even said at the end that he keeps sprouting mushrooms and it's gross and that's why he wants to fix his body. Um, that means he must keep forming the Rust Eater over and over so you'd think there'd be, like, a limitless supply, yet, uh, they're still, like, he said it was, uh, the Inoshige guy said it was very expensive. So, to me, that means that the, probably, like, maybe Imihame cured everyone, because we saw the Panda Clinic just curing a ton of people, right? Maybe they just gave it away for free. Maybe that's why they decided to go independent from the Japanese government. And maybe the Japanese government is like, hey, well, you know, we're going to make money off this. And 
and is charging people for it. So people who aren't in Imehame have a hard time getting it because of how expensive it is. I don't know, that's just my own headcanon because, you know, it wasn't enough time in the episode to, to go over all of that and everything, but that's just kind of my thoughts. So, And just the fact that Bisco does want to cure it. You know, he doesn't want to be this immortal god you know he wants to he wants to age normally alongside his friends and and stuff like that so it's a I feel like that's a general concept whenever a character gets immortality without it being their choice you know it's like a it's a weird tear because like sometimes in shows characters all they want to do is find immortality that's their whole goal you know and then there's characters that stumble upon immortality that just don't want it you know and then they have to find a way to get rid of it it's like it's like two sides to a to a coin that are pretty pretty interesting when characters go that way, but I don't know. I feel like I don't know how I'd feel about immortality. I feel like I'd be okay with it because I'm a I'm kind of a a loner for the most part anyway. So I feel like obviously I'd be sad to see some of the friends I talk to here and there and everything, you know, go on and age without me and, you know, eventually die and and I'd be left behind, but I don't know. At the same time, I think it'd be kind of cool just to live forever. Can you imagine, like, can you imagine just, like, how, how much, like, like, I'm getting old at this point, and when I was first in my teens, I was using, like, little flip phones and everything, and then we look at what we have now, I mean, hell, look at what I'm using here, I'm freaking taking notes on the, uh, the, the fold, so, like, you know, my freaking, my freaking phone folds up, <laughs> like, seriously, um, we're living in crazy times with how fast technology has evolved since, you know, since I was in my teens to now, and I mean, I'm, I'm getting old, but I'm still not even that old, you know, the technology is probably going to be pretty crazy by the time it gets to, you know, when I'm an old man and everything, um, can you imagine just living a lifetime or two past that, it'd be crazy to see, and everything, so, like, I'm, I'm intrigued by all that, and I want to, like, like, I, I firmly believe that alien life is out there and everything, but I'd love to see, like, proof of it ever get, like, revealed, like, whether they come here and fuck shit up, or whether we just find out that there's, you know, rodents on some planet 50 million light years away or something, and because our technology has evolved enough to see that, you know, even if it's not, like, sentient life, you know, just knowing that there's, like, a planet with other creatures and stuff like that out there would be really interesting to learn about and everything, but, um, obviously... The way I see it is I'm probably going to die before any of that gets revealed because if it hasn't already, like, been proven and it's at, like, Area 51 being under, cl like, close secret, I imagine when it first gets noticed it's going to be kept secret from the general public and then we're going to have to wait a long time before the public knows about it, you know, if ever kind of thing. But either way, that's a whole conversation for another time. But, but yeah, that's a, that's a really really interesting dilemma is like would you want eternal youth to be able to you know see all these crazy things and see the world progress whether it goes in a positive direction or a negative direction you know who knows who, who freaking we could with everything that's going on in the world right now freaking we could just be in nuclear winter and everything will suck so but uh but yeah like fucking it would just be an interesting thing to, to think about and contemplate and, and all that. But, but yeah, great show. I really enjoyed it. Um, it was like, I, like I said in the beginning, it's a, it's a fun show to watch. It's definitely not my favorite show ever. It had some cool moments. It had some cool music and everything. It had a really interesting, crazy, wacky concept that I, like, I feel like this is something that I wouldn't even come up with in a fever dream, you know, even though some of my dreams are pretty freaking wacky and crazy. Um, I don't know how they came up with the idea of this, but they're like, you know, let's make a, a world where, you know, they created these biological weapons that spread rust everywhere, make it like a post-apocalypse world a little bit. 
but make it so it looks like they're recovering a little bit, but they suffer from this disease. But we'll make these people who, you know, shoot mushrooms out of arrows and and those those mushrooms will consume the rust. But everyone will think they're bad guys because that's just cool if everyone underestimates the hero, you know, and everything. So we'll we'll go with that. And then we'll make some super mushroom that the that the main characters are going after. And that'll be like their target and, and goal and everything. And then we'll just make this bad guy that's just out for money, you know? <laughs> but like, I don't know, it's just... And like, we'll make freaking... They'll ride a giant crab and they'll be a, you know... What was that? Oh, what was that creature? Friggin' A. It was like a, uh... uh it was like a monument way back towards the beginning. Um... I wrote it down, didn't I? doop a doop a doo do do somewhere. It wouldn't have been episode one, right? It would have been like two or three. Yeah, like hippos with guns is something I wrote down. Like, never thought I'd be writing that shit down. Um, a Nico War Monument. It was like a hermit crab. That's what it was. I was trying to think of hermit crab, and I couldn't think of it. So then I tried to think of the name of it. But yeah, like the Nico War Monument that they had that was like a giant hermit crab that was like walking with cannons on it and shooting it and everything. Like, it's just some crazy shit in this show. Like, how do you even think of that crap? But I had a lot of fun watching it. It was never... Uh, like, I, I have had other shows that I've reacted to where I've kind of been like keeping an eye on the time, and I'm like... Well, how much longer until this episode's over? Even though these episodes are only, like, 22 minutes long when it comes to anime. Sometimes I do feel that way where I'm like, Oh, I can't wait for this to be over so I can just move on to my next show I gotta record tonight. Because I'm not really into it, you know? But this one, I never felt that. It was always like, oh wow, it's already over kind of thing, you know? And I I, I had fun watching it and all, like, the what-the-fuck moments and everything. It was, it was a good time, so... Yeah, uh, I forgot once again to mention it at the beginning of the episode, but uh, Tate no Yusha Nariagara is going to be replacing this season two. So, uh, The Rising of the Shield Hero season two is the English name. Uh, I have reacted to season one on my channel. I will be re-watching it because it's been a few years since I since I watched season one. And, uh, and I remember a lot of things, but I forget some things, and I want to kind of get myself refreshed, take some notes on some of the names that I don't remember anymore, and, and stuff like that. So I'll be watching it on my own time for season one, and then season two I'll be doing a reaction of, which is replacing this show. So I guess as of next week, assuming next week is when the season starts, sometimes there is a week in between, so we'll just have to wait and see. But if there's an episode for next week, I will be, I will be doing it, so... Keep an eye out for that if that's something you're interested in. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed. Uh, check out my Patreon if you want to see more content from me. There's all kinds of Patreon-exclusive shows on there using that tier, as well as early access and, and all kinds of other benefits and everything. So, so check all that out if you're interested in supporting the channel and getting a little bit of extra content from me. Link is in the description or it should be popping up on the screen. Thank you guys so much, and I will see you in my future reactions. Bye-bye.